My name is William Justice. Today we're going to explore a few simple tricks to speed your workflow in DaVinci Resolve by using multiple clips at the same time. I found a few simple things that are probably obvious, but I hadn't tried them before, so I thought I'd make a quick video about it. It might help you out. In my last video, I took a bit of time to answer some of your questions. There were a lot that I wanted to get to, but I just didn't have enough time. If you want to check out the video, it's right up here. This question was interesting. How can we align multiple text layers or any other layers in DaVinci Resolve just like we do in Photoshop or Premiere Pro? As far as I know, there's not an option in Resolve to space and align things like you can do in Photoshop. I could be missing something, so if you know of a way, um, let me know in the comments below. So what all can you do when you select multiple clips at the same time? Comment below and let me know what you think. I would love to hear from you. It's time to check out multi-clip select. We're gonna talk about what we can do, what you can't do, as well as some workarounds. So in our timeline, we have three stacked text nodes. We have apple, bananas, and strawberries, as well as some video clips. And we're gonna use these to experiment and see the different kinds of things we can do by selecting multiple clips. The original question was about aligning text. So let's see what we can do to get this text aligned. Obviously, we could click on each one of these and adjust the X and Y positions, but there's a little bit easier way. If we select all the clips, we can drag across to highlight them and select all three, or you can click a clip and holding the control key down, click the other clips that you want to select. Once these clips are selected, the properties in the inspector are gonna, going to affect all three clips. Now this only works for some things and not all, and that's what I'm gonna to try to show you. We can adjust the tracking, a lot of other things, and they're all adjusting at the same time. The interesting thing here is the X position and Y position. You see that they're, they have some da they're dashed out. And what we can do is we can drag this, it's gonna move them all at the same time, changing their position relative to what it was set before I started dragging. So you can see it's plus 148, or we can drag it back to minus 61. So we'll put them kind of somewhere in the middle there. If we want them to line up, all we need to do is type in a value. So let's click on the position and type in 1,000. And you notice that they're all gonna line up right there at 1,000 and they're all gonna start moving together. Right now the anchor is set to the center, but we could also set the anchor to be the right-hand side or the left-hand side. So we'll leave it on the right and we're gonna move these over a bit. Now the problem is with the Y. We can adjust the Y, but they're gonna go up and down all relative to each other. If we type in a value, they'll all be the same Y on top of each other. So let's click on Y and type in 500 and you'll see that they're all right on top of each other. We can still move them, they'll move together. So to get this spaced out right, we need to click the apples clip and we'll drag the Y up just a touch. We'll click the strawberry clip and drag the Y down just a bit. This is one case where it would be nice if the timeline editor and fusion worked a little bit more the same way. Um, in fusion, you could actually take this Y value and hit plus like 200 and it would add 200 to the Y value so that it would be easier to make sure that they were spaced out exactly evenly. So let's, with, that, with these selected, there's a few other things we can do. Um, we can adjust the size, tracking. The font case is kind of interesting. You could set it to you know all caps, all lowercase. I kind of like the uh, the small caps look, as well as zoom. All of these things work. There's a couple odd things here. I'm going to go ahead and change the font, and we'll put it uh, put it this one right here. If the fonts don't match, it gets a little quirky. So let's click this apples, and we're going to put this back on the font that it was before. Now, when we highlight all three and try to choose a font, you see that there's nothing showing, showing up in the list there. If we adjust the size, you'll see that we get this font thing, we get a font family that's gonna show up for all of them, and then we can adjust it from there. A little bit quirky, so if the fonts don't match, it appears there's some strange things going on. Um, another thing you can do is we can highlight all and click and change the color. And we got, all, got them all changed right together. I'm gonna go ahead and reset that. Another thing that you can't do is, you notice that when we click this, there's some keyframe options for position size and all these other properties. Once we select multiple clips, keyframing options go away, and you're gonna see this in some other areas as well. This works great for the regular text node, but unfortunately, if you're using text plus and you select all the clips, you can't adjust the properties for all the clips at the same time. It just doesn't work. So we highlight all these clips and we click on video. We can actually adjust the video attributes. The clips don't need to be stacked like this to have the multi-select work. So let's select um, these three clips right here and adjust some properties. We're gonna scale it down, rotate it a touch, and you'll see that they're all scaled and rotated. So let's reset that. We adjusted all three clips at the same time, which is great. Um, but you'll notice that once we select multiple clips, the option to keyframe goes away. So if we wanted to do some animation or keyframing on multiple clips, there's not a way to do it exactly, but there is a workaround. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this first clip and let's do the uh, rotation angle and we're gonna 
zoom it way out. We'll set a keyframe on the size and rotation, and we'll go over about 10 frames and zoom it in and reset the angle. Just like that. Obviously these other clips are the same, but this is where we can use the copy and paste attributes. So we have this animation that we like and we want the other clips to do the same thing. Let's right click on the first clip and choose copy. Now we, this is where we can use the paste attributes. Typically you can right click and say paste attributes or hit Alt V, but let's do that for both clips. So we're gonna multi-select, right click and say paste attributes. So in this case, we can choose all video attributes, or if we wanted to get specific, we could do the rotation angle and the zoom and hit okay. And now what we have is we have each clip is gonna have that same animation applied. So we're able to take the attributes from this one and copy it to multiple clips at the same time. Let's talk about some effects. The effects kind of work, but not really. So if we go to open effects and let's search for the, uh, the light rays. So obviously you can take light rays and drag it onto each of these clips. You can highlight all three clips and take a light rays and drag it on. And that effect is gonna be applied to each of the clips. Okay, this works great. But we have the same problem with the as with the text plus. When we highlight all three clips, the OpenFX option goes away. There's not really an, a way to come into OpenFX and change some of these settings for all the clips at the same time. And this is where we could use the copy paste. So if we have the first clip selected, we could adjust the uh, threshold or some settings, change the pos position, copy it, and highlight the other clips or any other clips that we want to get those settings, right click, choose paste attributes, or we could click Alt V. And for video attributes, all we want to do is the plugins and paste it. And these two clips got the changes that we made to the first clip. You can adjust clip timing by highlighting the clips. And when you drag it, the timing is going to change altogether. The great thing about this is it works even if the clips aren't the same length. So we can have these right there. We can highlight all three clips and adjust that timing and they all stay together. And th there's quite a few other things you can do like changing the clip color so you can highlight them, right click and clip color. And all the clips that are highlighted are gonna have the color change. The last thing I was gonna talk about that's a little bit interesting is if you highlight all of these clips and adjust the size of one of them, it's gonna adjust the size of all of them at the same time. Um, so if you have a bunch of clips and you wanna shrink the size to you know a certain amount, let's say in this case, let's say we wanted to put these at two seconds um, we could start this clip, go two seconds in, and drag the clip length down like that. And we have these gaps here, so we could delete them like that. Or you could set an endpoint and an out point by hitting I and O around those clips. Go to the edit menu and choose delete gaps. And that'll take those gaps out just like that. I'm sure there's a lot more you can do with multiple clips selected. I just wanted to put this together real quick because I thought it was kind of interesting and especially the alignment options. I think they're really useful. I hadn't really thought to try it before now. If you have some interesting ways that you use multi-select clips, let me know in the comments below. Subscribe for more videos like this, like this video, and comment below. I'd love to hear what you think. Thanks for watching.